Hello and welcome to CEO's Talk Business on at the Marina today. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this program as we speak with Princess Vicky Hastroff, CEO of ENL Consortium Limited, the terminal service provider in the maritime industry. Now, while the pandemic started, we know that so many businesses had to uh, close shop. But for those in the shipping and allied businesses in maritime as well, they put up so much resilience to ensure that service provision kept on going. And one of such businesses is the ENL. Today, the, the CEO will speak with us on how they've put up resilience to ensure the service delivery to the trading public. Princess, you're welcome and it's a pleasure to have you on the maiden edition of this program speak with us. Now, like I mentioned earlier, when the pandemic broke out, a number of businesses had to shut down. But in the maritime and shipping and allied businesses, they had to stay because they provide essential services. And we know that for you, your payoff has been expertise. How did you use this expertise to navigate the, the problem period to ensure that you kept up with providing the same business to keep trade moving? Uh, during the pandemic period, we've been able to stay afloat. Like you earlier on said, the port sector is a critical sector of the Nigerian economy. We provide services 24-7 throughout the year. Probably the only day we don't operate is um, maybe Christmas Day and during the salary holidays. Everyone, uh, dock workers work both during the week and at weekends. Like I said, the port terminal can afford to close shop because it's an international uh, maritime business. Uh, the laden time of ships is very important. To there is such an is such an interwoven thing, interconnectivity, in terms of the way we operate. How are we feeling during the pandemic period? You know, scope and scale is really a very important tool in balancing in any business environment, whether pandemic or no pandemic. For us in ENL, we've been able, the capacity that we have, you know, been able to bring our, uh, our staff to, you know, they've been well trained, they've been, they've received enough training to be able to withstand in any business environment, under any business environment. When no one was envisaging that there would be pandemic or COVID, but it's such that um, the capacity here is so strong. We brought them to a level where they will be able to operate under any business environment. And that has really done well for us. We were not envisaging it. And you, so it was natural for staff to, to operate within that period. Even when, when, during the total lockdown period, when we didn't envisage that we will have X number of staff to come to work. Yeah. You could see the drive was in them. Mm -hmm. They really wanted to come. They went through some are living in Ogo State. They went through all the traffic situations, all the problems and um, obstructions on the road to even come to work. Such is the interest of staff, you know, that they have in getting the company going and the operations of the company. And what does it for us? It's just that there is such an excellent and positive relationship between staff and management. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, during such period, you won't find anyone at work. It would have been easy for them to give excuse and say, sorry, because I live in Ogo State, I live so far away. You know, there were soldiers yes. on the road. My staff went through all of that and they were still willing to come to work. It shows that the kind of relationship that the management have with staff is such a positive thing. It is something that has worked positively for us. In ENL, we do not compete. There's such a sense of cordiality among all staff. They are happy to come to work. They are happy to contribute to the growth of the company. So for me, I really do appreciate my staff. You know, I, it wasn't something that I expected they would, they, they would do. But they were willing to do it, and they did it so joyfully. And for that, I will be eternally grateful to 
the staff of ENL. Okay. In some earlier interactions, I've heard uh, industry people say you've done so much, ENL does so much with using platforms to, to ensure that they drive service delivery, particularly at a time like this, a number of things they were able to provide their services virtually where uh, the customers could stay in the comfort of their homes or in their offices and are able to carry out some transactions because the services are provided. How well have you used technology in that term to provide services? Yeah, well, thank God for digital technology. <laughs> As a cleaning agent, you don't have to come to Yeda or come to the port terminal before we provide services to you. You can print your bill, you know, the commercial department is there, we can print your bill and send it to you, either by email or whichever form you choose mm -hmm. to. But you know, if, if there's a reason for any complaint, how easy is it? We communicate by virtual, you know, for example, every morning we do have uh, operations uh, meeting Good. where we have, where we do review, Good. you know, and after each of those um, mm -hmm. uh, meetings, mm -hmm. reviews, we communicate with you. Probably you've been using this technology before this uh, pandemic uh, uh, broke out. Yes. Were there challenges, were there difficulties during the pandemic? And if there were, how were you able to cope? We were not making use of Zoom before. Okay. So now we have Zoom. <laughs> we can relate with our customer via Zoom technology. Okay. You know, so all we did is just immediately step up to be able to meet with the challenges. Okay. And I think every company does that. Uh, for companies that are smart and wise, yes. you can get around this without applying all this digital technology right now. Of you know, by use of, making use of features, Zooms and all of that, webinar and all of that. We do all of that here. You know, and I think, by and large, companies are beginning to realize that staff don't necessarily even sometimes have to come to work before we offer services. services. You know, we're beginning to realize that because we were practicing social distancing where some people come to work at a particular day, some don't come to work yeah. at a particular day, and we discover that nothing is amiss. The work is going, and we are meeting up with the challenges of every, you know, of the business. In fact, so, that, that, that should take us into the next question to say, okay, very importantly, Having gone through the experience of the lockdown, how comfortable would you see the kind of changes that you use in running the business continue? Everything you did during the lockdown, how well would you think it will help businesses to carry it to the, to the, next, the next level? level. Yes. Like I said, this is an eye opener. Yes. And we've all been able to learn a great deal from all of us. Yes. What we didn't think we could do before without being people being physically, physically present. present. We are doing it and we are even doing much more. Wow. So to me, it's a big lesson for us that we can transact our business in certain ways and still achieve results, yes. even better results. Yes. You know, now in the ports, before I do have influx of people coming to the port to do one thing or the other. That don't happen anymore. I have less people coming to the to the office, yeah. uh, to the ports right now, yeah. which is really good for the business. The port environment is actually a security area. Yes. So it has really helped us to observe that, you know, which to me is positive in a way. Yes. As far as ENL is, con is concerned, we we'll actually really want to continue doing it this way <laughs> because it has helped us. Yeah, okay. We see us getting better, you know, and applying even more better technology yes. from what we currently do. Okay. But now, I know that uh, in the industry where you operate, uh, regulation is there. Regulation is what helps even your own operations to have a particular uh, shape. If you would review probably policy, regulation, and then inputs of the regulators during this period, do a review and how you think it helped or supported the business during this period. The regulations from government, I will start from maybe from federal government okay. as related to the pandemic. Yeah. I think federal government has done really well. And Lagos State in particular have done incredibly well. 
um, all of the regulations they imposed during the pandemic has really helped to combat the disease or the virus. Yeah. As you can see, uh, the figures are going down. Um, are going down. Yes. And we pray it will continue to grow down. Yes. I seize the opportunity to say a big thank you to Lagos State, where because that's the state where we operate. Yeah. You know, they've done excellently well. For me, I think government has done one well in terms of the regulation. You know, an MPA, for example, of, um, they're doing exactly what we are doing in terms of digital technology, yeah. in terms of we've had a series of meetings with them virtually, you know. Yeah. You know, they're doing exactly the same thing, you know. So I could see that that sense of cooperation among all stakeholders yeah. to achieve Chief. results without necessarily having physical uh, contact with each other. So for me, that's really good. It's good. Okay. Yes. Now, a, a last one here. <clears throat> From all these experiences over the last four or five months, what is the outlook of trade from your perspective? Will I say I have so much hope? I'm not sure. And that's the truth. Why did I say that? There is no nation, there is no economy of any nation that is not affected by the pandemic. In fact, from what I heard, that this pandemic that has lasted for eight months, yeah. it, might take a it might take a recovery period of three years, of up to three years. Yeah. You can see what's happening to the airline. Yeah. It's at such a state of collapse. Everything is coming. There's collapse, collapse all over the place. Just all over. Just all over. But that's why I said I'm not I, I'm not really too positive for now. But I believe that if Nigeria can step up by providing um, some kind of um, palliatives. palliatives, more palliatives, and two if the right policies are applied to support businesses, because the greatest problem we have in Nigeria is policy changes without carrying along people that are operating within that sector yes. where you want to change policies. It really doesn't, it doesn't go well for businesses. So, for me, for Nigerian government, we should carry everybody along, call people if there are, we want to make policy changes in any particular sector. You need to carry, there is the need for government to carry along people that are operating with that, within that sector. You need to hear from them. Because they are the ones that know where the shoe pinches. They are the ones that are paid when policy she has some changed. assault. Yeah. When they change, when those policy changes, they are the one that bears the brunt. You need to hear from them that if we do this, how will it affect your businesses? So it will be possible for government to put them into consideration how adversely or positively it might, they might be affected yeah. by those policy changes. Yeah. So it is very important for government to begin to do that right now, if we want the economy of the country of the of Nigeria to improve, because already there is total downturn in in the economy of Nigeria in every sector, not only in the port sector, in the maritime sector, yes. in the aviation sector, in the banking sector, in every sector, even the manufacturers are suffering. There is the need for government to communicate with every. Stakeholders, stakeholders. Yes. you know, every business operators in Nigeria, yes. there is that need. Because if you want to help them, you need to hear from them. You need to know what their challenges are. You, they need, sometimes they might have positive contribution to make. Yes. To tell you, government, hey, minister, if you do this, we'll be able, our businesses will yes, improve. Yes. And we will help to drive the economy of the country better than it is. For me, I think that's, that's, that's my honest opinion and advice to government. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for speaking with us and sharing with us on the experience of uh, how your business and other businesses in the in the shipping and maritime uh, industry were able to fare through the period of the lockdown. We are grateful that uh, you have also shared with us some very good insights on the importance of uh, policy consistency to guide and shape operations within the sector. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you viewers, for being with us now. That was it on the meeting edition of the program, CEO Stock Business in the Industry. We do hope that you follow us when we come back again to speak on other issues. My name is Hope Oregri, and it has been Adi Marina today. Thank you.